Thank you for joining us. We are on Around the Wickets on the Papare.com. Indeed, it's a great privilege and a pleasure to be talking to you yet again with another program of Around the Wickets. And this time, we want to focus on New Zealand and particularly the test matches because the T20 happens sometime later. Now, don't forget, Sri Lanka had an excellent record when they defeated Bangladesh 3-0 right across that one-day series. But I'll tell you, the red ball game is altogether different. Now, to talk about it, we got a red ball opening batsman, <laughs> Malinda Barnapura, who is with us. Thank you for joining us, Malinda. Now, first and foremost, let's start off. Why should the selectors name 22 for a test series? When it's a two-test series, it's a home series. And if you have an injured player, you can always call the normal, normal accepted situation or the accepted policy has been 15. So, do you, wh why do you think? I mean, I like to put you in a, on a spot, uh, in a spot and ask you this question. Yeah, there is a three-day practice game against New Zealand. Yep. So, I'm sure they just want to have a look at few players before they name the final 15. So, anyway, when we have a, when we select a squad, mm -hmm. there's always 20 or 22 players, even for a one-day squad or even for a test series. And then again, the same things happen again. You, as you said, there's only two test matches and we have 22 players. And there are a few players that uh, who have come back to the squad and so I'm sure that they want to have a look. So, uh, they are playing a three-day game and after the three-day, I'm sure they'll have their final 15. Yeah, the three-day game, they have named a side and that has, I've been given this list, Danushka Gunatilaka, Oshada Fernando, Angelo Pereira, Chamika Karnarath and Asita Fernando, all of them are in the 22-man squad as well. So, let's see, I mean, you, you seem to make a point about looking at these players and then that final decision. Anyway, we're not going to dwell too much about it, but what we want to dwell is about the Test Championship. Now, we know that cricket, it, it's more the T20 and the one-day format, where Test cricket is not something that most people really look forward to. But in, in that context, 60 points now uh, of a Test match, if you win, so that's a lot of points. So, obviously, that will interest the teams. But as an ex-player who's played a lot of Test cricket, what is your opinion about a test championship? Do you think it's timely and good or...? I always believe because uh, when nowadays everyone is looking for T20s and uh, even T10 games, all the one days. But once again, when you look at the Ashes, you could see it could be a Saturday, it could be a Sunday or a mm. weekday. You still have the love for the game, for the, the passion uh, people have for the but test. But just to stop you there, now if you look at the Ashes, for example, England and Australia, it's traditional. I mean, they have played over a hundred years, so traditions are there. But how practical is it, shall we say, uh, to I mean, to expect something similar or close to that, say in Sri Lanka or in the subcontinent? Now, my question is a bit long because even in India, where you know they have had over hundred thousand people watching a Test match in Calcutta, numbers have dwindled. So, how practical is this? Yeah, it's, we can't match uh, the traditions or ashes, but mm -hmm. once again. Where is test cricket now? And I'm sure ICC also want to make something out of it and to get that level of test cricket, the passion for the game, even the youngsters. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, we'll not talk about any test players. They exactly. always talk about the T20 players, one-day players. So, I'm sure something that they have to start again. Yeah. And I'm sure that Sri Lanka, will, we will not see uh, many thousands of people watching a test match. Mm -hmm. But then again, as you said, 60 points, mm -hmm. it is something really worth. And uh, every team will play for it because uh, end of the day, if you are the test champion, I'm sure it's something really big. Absolutely, absolutely. No doubt indeed. That will be something that the teams will want to look forward to. So, let's focus on the test match. And Gaul is a, is a happy hunting ground. It's a fortress for Sri Lanka. What do you think the composition would be? Will it be 7-4, 6-5? If it is 7-4, three spinners and one fast ball? That's a massive, uh, you know, debate about it. But if you were a selector, how would you go? I will go with uh, two fast bowlers and uh, two spinners. Even in goal that uh, we have seen long years ago, that mm. uh, we have played with uh, two or three spinners with one uh, one seamer. Mm. But at the end of the day, some of the sides like South Africa, they still believe that they are the, their strength is fast bowling mm. and they have played about three fast bowlers with one spinner. At the end of the day, that Sri Lanka did really well. Mm. So, when you look at the spinners, mm. Sri Lanka will have the best out of them. Mm. But then again, when you look at the New Zealand side, they are coming after uh, the World Cup series with yeah. uh, some high quality uh, bowling, batting, fielding, team spirit, everything. So, I'm sure uh, when you look at uh, our, our side or Sri Lankan side, yeah. I'm sure that we will have to 
have at least two fast bowlers. before I get into the Sri Lankan team, let me ask you a question. Now, you made the point that New Zealand is coming after a World Cup win or World Cup performance, brilliant performance. Played, uh, had played uh, white ball cricket. Now, and played in conditions that they are kind of comfortable because it's very similar. Now, here they come. Complete change, red ball in hot, humid, possibly spinning conditions. Uh, what kind of a challenge will it be for New Zealand and how much of a role will Tilan Samaravira play? Uh, absolutely, they'll have uh, some kind of, uh, as you said, about the conditions. But mm. other than that, I've seen when they come to Sri Lanka, mm. there is, uh, as you all know, that there's 14 overs or 15 overs per uh, one hour that you have to bowl. Yeah. New Zealand is one of the sites that they have done it in Sri Lanka. So, they have not given any excuses with this hot sun or the weather. They are prepared, they are professionals and uh, I'm sure that they are not going to make any excuses mm. because they have a young side, they have experience, they have some of the top bowlers and when it But how will they cope? Now, that's not what I'm asking. You know, in New Zealand, you know, you are played there, the ball swings, it seems. Here, it's different. Winners will have to work hard, fast bowlers in short spells and the Tilan Samarvira factor. Yeah, Tilan will be definitely give them the best uh, or what do you call, they, they can give anything about Sri Lankan mm. cricket or the pitchers or the players, mm. about our spinners. But they have hired uh, Chamin Dawaz earlier as their fast bowling coach and now they want uh, Tilan to come in, especially they do it uh, when they come to Sri Lanka. So, will, will, will it be uh, Malinda, will it be, I don't think there will be real coaching, isn't it? It will no. be more like strategy Information. and handling situations. Yeah. And Will that be the case? That That's all he can do because right. you know it's just a short period and yeah. what else he can do. He could yeah. Just an idea as you said about goal mm. and uh, they are playing the second test at the over. Mm. So, it could be really about pitch conditions and about our bowlers yeah. and the current situation, what we are doing yeah. now. Yeah, I want to dwell a little bit more on New Zealand before I get into the Sri Lankan team. Now, we all know that spin bowling, well, can look spin bowling can look very normal everywhere in the world but we also know that spinners need to adjust according to conditions well the way you bowl in New Zealand will be very different to the way you bowl in Sri Lanka so if they brought in four spinners now I'll give you an example Nathan Lyon who's one of the top spinners in the world struggled in Sri Lanka Australia lost the series because Nathan Lyon bowled in my humble opinion the same way he bowls in Australia, fired in, fired the ball, waited for bounce and never really varied his pace. So, I didn't think he understood very much despite all his experience. So, how do you see these four spinners uh, that has come, who, who aren't in the same league as Nathan Lyon, uh, adapting and adjusting to Sri Lankan conditions? Is it, is it kind of possible after you know being brought up that way to suddenly come here and and change? Yeah, that's not easy at yeah. all, but yeah. they'll have only a three-day game mm. to cope up with whatever uh, mm. the uh, uh, support that they'll get from the wickets that yeah. they're playing in Katunayak in the first three-day game. Yeah. But when when you talk about goal, mm. I'm sure even the uh, New Zealanders, they'll also know that there's something out from uh, goal wicket. Mm. So, as you said, they'll have to. That's why I'm sure that that is something that they can get out from Tilan yeah. because uh, he's one of the best persons to get all these information about wickets and inform uh, what you call the information about Sri Lankan players as well mm -hmm. and uh, you know some of the players will like when the ball is coming really hard as you said Nathan Lyon so the same way those little things will help the spinners as well how to handle it uh, what's the flight what's the pace like mm -hmm. so those are little things and uh, even New Zealand also have a couple of experienced players mm -hmm. I'm sure they do now let's let's focus on the Sri Lankan uh, scenario first and foremost who will you pick as Dimut's opening card? <laughs> I know it's a tough call. It's yeah. a tough call. Uh, lots of uh, you know equations. Uh, Kusal Pereira could be one, but if he's keeping wickets, I don't know. But then also the Fernando has been batting at three. Lairu Tiriman has played the last six Test matches. So you know lots of possibilities. <coughs> Whom would you pick? Um, there's the Danish Gunatilaka is also playing at three. Yeah, but he has not played cricket for a while, yeah. so I don't know whether he's actually yeah. straight away in the equation. But the thing is, we have uh, 22 players named and he's one of them. So, I know. <laughs> so, whoever will do something. So, which is your choice? I will go with uh, Kusal Jani. To open yes. and keep wickets as well? There's Dinesh Chandimal is also in the squad. Yes, so, that's true. If he's going to play, I could think he so now, keep wickets. So, now, 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 now I, I like to dwell a little bit more on this. If Kusal Pereira opens, then if Chandimal is going to keep, Chandimal will have to bet at 7. 
Yeah, that's going to be as, another. As, as, now, yeah. someone averaging in the mid 40s to the high 40s, who's got close to 10 test hundreds, eight or nine test hundreds, lots of experience, batted at four and five. Is it the right thing to do, giving him the gloves and telling him to bat at seven? Yeah. What do you think? You know, as a as a player, Chandimal, I don't think that he should bat at seven or eight. You but know, wicket keepers wicket position keepers, is going to be there. Yes. So then again, that's we have about three wicket keepers. Uh, Dikwal is also yeah. in the 22. Yeah. Then Kusal Mendis is there. So it's going to be a hard call. Once is again. it a good headache, Malinta or a bad headache? <laughs> I know the selectors will have another, another headache as you know when you select five or four wicket okay. keepers in that 22 squad, and. Uh, I'm sure uh, Kusal as a batsman, I think he should be in the squad. Yeah. Even, of course, he of should course. play. So he could. So yeah. then again, the call is going to be who's going to keep wickets. Mm. Uh, whether the number seven or six will be another issue for mm. Sandimal to bat. And uh, so I'm sure we'll wait for selectors call. <laughs> <laughs> you just avoided a bouncer. <laughs> right now, the next bouncer is the coach. Now I've been given some information here that 11 coaching stints by 10 coaches since 2011. Now, does that make Sri Lanka cricket a higher and higher attitude? You know, does that make Sri Lanka cricket look like adopting a higher and higher approach to coaches? So, straight away, there is no confidence. You know, stability-wise, the coach would think 10 times, not twice. And now, Hathuru Singha is out. Now, the question we need to ask is, yes, Hathuru Singha has been coming in with, with, a, with a few questions and, and, and I don't want to say that he was under a cloud, but the World Cup was alright, then beating Bangladesh and now immediately after the Bangladesh series, a New Zealand series happened. I really don't think it's, personally, don't think it's the right time to change a coach. And then you bring Romesh Ratnayake into the equation, he is called an interim coach, where you are right, actually neither here nor there. Because, you know, he's, he's just standing in. So, in that scenario, Malinda, I don't want to know about the coaches, but how would this impact the team and the performance and the players? Now, as a player, I'm sure you have been in, in that dressing room. You know how one's you know, mind works. So, how would, what is the dilemma a player will face when, when, when this kind of scenario happens? Yeah, it's very hard. Uh to tell you the truth, uh, last Monday, I think, uh, Sri Lankan have never, the players don't have practice even. They don't know the squad. Mm. So, they were just waiting uh, till they announce the squad. Exactly. Because they don't have a coach to practice. Precisely. So, it's going to be a little hard time for us because uh, another day, uh, players will suffer mm. and Sri Lanka cricket will suffer because uh, you don't want to have a coach for this series, another interim coach for the next series. Absolutely. A coach is a person that players will always trust yeah. and you should always build up that relationship because uh, you know the coach, the p best person to know about a player mm -hmm. and unfortunately that you change coaching staff every tour, even in the middle of a tour. So, I don't think it's going to be any good for Sri Lanka cricket and first we heard that all the coaches should be stepped down mm. and now you also uh, heard Jerome Jarrett. Yeah, and Ramesh Ratnayake was one of the coaching staff who was looking out the fast bowlers and now he has given the yeah. uh, coaching stint as interim now, coach. Just as a matter of interest, you said that players need to enjoy the coach. Which coach did you enjoy? I did with uh, Trevor Bailey's and even Chandi Singh. They were both good. They, they were really good. Fantastic. Good. Finally, how do you see this scenario impacting Sri Lanka? Now, we know that New Zealand have won their last five consecutive series, won their last five series. And since 2016, they have won seven out of eight series. So that's an impressive record. Sri Lanka has been kind of up and down, lost to Australia in Australia, struggled in New Zealand, beat South Africa against everybody's expectations. So how do you see this series panning out? Well, in the considering the backgrounds of the two teams, including this coaches scenario and all that. Yeah, when you look at New Zealand, we'll always say that they'll be uh, up in the ladder. But mm. once again, we're playing in Sri Lanka. We beat Bangladesh three three games that we have some confidence. Everyone is backing uh, our captain Dimuth Karunaratna. Mm. Players are doing well and few opportunities for some of the new players to come in. Mm. And what's the secret of Dimuth? Is it the school he went or <laughs> play? No, I'm asking. I mean, as someone who, who knows all these things. I'm sure that he's, he's, he got this ability to keep all the players together. Even he said that all the senior players are supporting <laughs> every time that uh, whenever he wants to make a decision, they get, he gets all the support. So, that's all what we need. I was only asking whether it was that school background and upbringing and culture. Also, does, does that contribute? 
definitely, you know. Okay. And also the club that he played for SSC, he'll be the <laughs> captain as well. So I'm sure that he got enough you, you know what you, you know what we are trying to do, you know from where he comes. So I'm, I'm just pulling his leg. Yeah. Anyway, well, we are almost at the end of the show, end of the program, around the wickets. And before we go, we need to ask you the question. Now, the question is, it's a bit tricky. Now, you need to listen to me very carefully. Our, our production team has deliberately made this question difficult. Now, listen, okay. Morocco Cricket Foundation Federation, which was expelled from ICC last month. Now, I don't know why that had to be brought into the question, but it doesn't matter. Morocco Cricket Foundation, which was expelled from ICC last month, held an ODI tri-series in 2002. We are talking about an association that has been expelled and we are also talking about an association that held a tri-series in 2002. Now, you know, a question is, which country emerged champions of that 2002 tri-series which was held or organized by the Morocco Cricket Federation which is currently suspended by the ICC. So, you, you know where to send the answer. Now, last week we asked you the question, when was the last time, that was before 2019, Sri Lanka whitewashed Bangladesh in an ODI series? The answer, 2014, Bangladesh was defeated 3-0 and the winner, Sanji was Silva. Now, we are almost at the end of the show, but I need to remind you that you need to subscribe to thepapare.com because if you are looking for quality content, if you need to be updated, no better place to go, thepapare.com. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you soon. Until then, it's goodbye. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this. And don't forget to hit the bell icon for our latest content.